stability never felt better. The first five miles, you're just getting warmed up. From downtown to uptown, you'll take the scenic route. Tired legs, you'll feel fresh. From first steps to final strides. Steep hills, super steep hills, long runs, even longer runs. Whatever comes, you can run through it. With stability, cushioning, and more comfort than ever, in every step. Because nothing feels better than the adaptive stability and premium comfort of the Gel Keano 30 shoe. All right. Good morning to everyone in the United States who's watching our show. I hope everyone got up early to watch some awesome track and field action. Day two of the World Athletics Championships are underway. And Kyle, I mean, we've been looking forward to the races, but we were kind of just like watching our clock for the morning session because we're like, we want to get to this show. Because today we've got an awesome lineup of guests, and I'm just super excited that we get to kick it off with one of the greatest of all time, two-time Olympic gold medalist, two-time world champion, and the world record holder in the 800 meters, maybe the artist behind the most beautiful race in history, David Rudisha. David, thank you so much for being here. You're here because you're a World Athletics Ambassador. So how has Budapest been treating you? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, you know, I'm glad to be here, you know, uh, to be in these uh, great uh, championships and uh, to be an ambassador. Uh, it's a great opportunity and uh, I'm glad because uh, uh, this is my third time in Budapest and uh, every time I've uh, come here, I've really enjoyed it. But uh, this now, I'm not coming to compete, but I'm coming as an ambassador. It's really special. You know, I think I'm kind of fangirling a little bit. It's like a, a lesson for everyone to just always send that email to see. We saw that you were in Budapest, and I was like, do you think we could get David Rudisha on our show to sit down with us? So really, really thankful that you're here. How is it being on this other side and watching the meet so far? Day two, the atmosphere seems like it's been incredible, but what's been your initial impressions of Budapest? Well, uh, it's a great, uh, you know, uh, place, you know, and uh, these championships are so far so good. Uh, we are really enjoying, we are having fun, you know, to watch uh, athletes uh, competing. And uh, like yesterday, it was very exciting, you know, the first day. And today also, you know, it's going to be another good day. You know, we have the finals of the 10,000 meters men. And of course, the 100 meters that are coming at the last, last event of the day. And uh, we are anticipating for, you know, these uh, events. So uh, I'm glad, you know, because so far so good. Uh, the weather also is, is good, you know, although it's a little bit warm, <laughs> especially yeah. in the morning, yeah. <laughs> but uh, not so bad. Are you rooting for anyone in particular in the 100 or 10,000 meters? <laughs> well, uh, yeah, in the 100, you know, it is a really a tough one because almost these guys are almost at the same level. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it will be very special to see if Omanyala can yeah. pull something, you know, it will be great for Africa for the first time too in uh, in the global uh, stage in the uh, World Championships. Yeah, so for you, I saw you posting on your Twitter page the photo of you with the Kenyan team. Has that been really cool? I guess like for, they must look up to you as you're their favorite, a legend. Is that, have you adjusted to that? It's sort of like, oh man, like, Someone like Emmanuel Career looks up to me, and like you inspired this generation of, of stars. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, every time I'm around them, you know, they feel uh, very happy. You know, they feel inspired, and uh, this is a great uh, thing because, uh, uh, you know, when I was running, uh, some of them were still young, and uh, now that they're in the field, you know, taking over uh, from where we left, and uh, this is really great to see them. And, uh, you know, they, 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 they look at me like at their idol. Yeah. When you think back, I mean, 2011, first world championship title, right? Is that correct? Mm -hmm. That's now 12 years ago, but does it kind of feel like yesterday? Well, yeah. yes. Uh, you know, uh, every time also I get uh, on the track, you know, watching the athletes running, sometimes I feel also the adrenaline, you know, 
and uh, it's really amazing because I don't know what is going to happen. You know, sometimes uh, when you are watching, you see some of uh, athletes making some mistake, get, uh, getting boxed in, and uh, you know, uh, I can just feel like wow, like if I was there, maybe I could have done this <laughs> or that. But you know, it's a good feeling, and yeah. it's you know, it makes us feel like okay. Sometimes we feel like we are also part of that uh, the, the 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 athletes who are running the field. Right now, the state of the 800, it's just like there's, we, were t- we talk about this a lot, there's so many guys who are like at the same level, and so any one of eight guys can win the final, or win the gold medal. And I just remember, you know, when it was you in 2012 and 2016, everyone knew we have to watch what you are going to do. Is that interesting? Is it, do you find this more enjoyable, that it's like it could be anybody's race, or... Do you miss? It's like, all right, I used, I would have done it this way. I imagine you miss when you were the one winning, yeah. but just in general, like, yeah, is it to have someone way out front or a wide open field like today? Yeah, um, you know, uh, the way I look into, uh, literally, I look at uh, eight hundred meters at the the current, uh, you know, um, the guys who are running. It's wide open because no one has really dominated, uh, you know, winning. Uh, uh, you know, and being consistent in the way of uh, they w- they are running. Uh, sometimes you see an athlete is running from the front. Sometimes he's running from the middle, and sometimes you find someone is running from behind. And uh, it's confusing because you know, in eight hundred is one of the races that you really have to master your running style, and uh, you know, you have to put everything in place, like right from the training. You know, during my time, I really. Uh, did very uh, much on my rhythm, mm-hmm. you know, and that's why I mostly uh, ran, ran from the front because I never wanted to be boxed in or run from behind because I can lose that rhythm. But because I trained and I was courageous to not run from the front, I can easily run my races. There are years in which you went out, you know, well under 56, uh, under 50 seconds in order to establish yourself at the front. But then there are other races in which you went out in 54 seconds, still up front controlling the race. Before the race, how do you get in the mindset of saying, like, this is going to be a fast one or now I'm going to make this tactical and make everyone bunch up behind me and work for it? Well, you know, um, yes, uh, you know, I kind of own 800 at some uh, time and... Uh, uh, one thing that some of the athletes didn't know in some of the championship of competition that I wasn't also at my best. But, you know, um, I still felt like, yes, they know that I have the speed and if it is go fast, I can do a fast race. So I kind of tried to own the race. So sometimes I just started the first 100 meters and go fast and then... I slow down. Nobody wants to go. <laughs> in front. They're like and, you do. Uh, <laughs> I, I cross, <laughs> like in 2015 in uh, Beijing. Yeah. I wasn't at my best, and that is one of the uh, championship uh, competition that I say if somebody knew my form and somebody knew how to uh, who was at his best, even 143, 142 form could have beaten me very easily. But because I won that race, I made it suit my day yeah. that day at that time close so hard <laughs> In- I, I i need i want to hear this one for myself okay like, go ahead. <laughs> so you, you talk about that feeling before the race you obviously felt and knew you were going to be amazing in 2012 and you've probably told this story many times but sitting in this room like i, I want to hear it from you from the call room to stepping on the track in london what is the behind the scenes for you? Was it is it true that you told everyone like come with me and like I, and if you want to die or what what is the, what is the actual story from the call room? Was that an announcement? Like you got up like I'll take everyone I'll take you to the promised land. Yeah. Get on board. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's very interesting. Uh, Twenty twelve was one of the year that uh, I did a lot of preparation. And uh, that was way back because preparing for an Olympic can take you four years. So all those years, because I missed in 20, 2008 in Beijing, I was preparing for 2012. And uh, I really pray that everything goes well uh, perfectly. One, I wasn't so good in 
bad weather, like when it rains heavily and cold, I struggle a bit, you know, with chest problems. <laughs> but uh, I was praying that that day will go well, and uh, everything was okay, and I was in good and in great form because uh, I tested myself in few diamond leagues, and I was doing uh, greatly and running fantastic time, 141, uh, before the uh, before the the Olympic Games. So coming to Olympics, I was I was feeling great, and I told these guys now. Uh, I'm going to go fast, <laughs> <laughs> that's for sure. And uh, I want to see if I can do 141 without a pacemaker. And uh, one of my uh, compatriots, uh, uh, Timothy Kitum, uh, I told him, please, I know these guys uh, from, uh, especially Kaki and uh, Mohamed Daman, they will, they will stay right behind me. But please, because I'm going to cross uh, the 400 uh, at a very high uh, uh, time, and of course, I'm going to push the second 200 very fast. And I know these guys will try to be there. And uh, the last 200 meters, uh, if you can just come with your own pace, I think you'll easily pick these guys. And uh, that is how it was. And uh, he was really glad that what I told him it, uh, really happened the same, even though... I didn't expect uh, Amos Nigel to run a 141. That was also impressive. <laughs> and of course, everyone ran a very good time. And uh, I believe it's because I pushed that uh, event, uh, that race, that uh, night, that evening, very fast. Do you see any of those guys today? Are they still buying you beers and saying thank you for doing that for them? <laughs> or uh, <laughs> It was really fun because <laughs> after the race, you know, uh, I can see their faces, like almost everybody was happy. You know? <laughs> everybody was happy. And I remember hugging all of them, and that was really cool. Just national record, national record, yeah. national like record. Everybody was rewarded with something. <laughs> when, when you, at what point in the race are you like, oh, something special is happening right now? Was it not until you crossed the finish line and you actually saw the time? Or with 200 meters ago, you're like, you know, maybe saw the split and you knew that you were on path? Yeah, you know, during the race, uh, yes, you can, you know, you have, you, f you feel you, you, you feel good, you feel you're great, you feel you're moving. But uh, in most of my races that I was running 141, I can see, like, uh, there's a huge gap in uh, behind me uh, by the time I'm getting to 200 meters. But uh, in, in the final of uh, London uh, Olympics, Hundred was, I by the time I reached the six hundred, I was see I saw the big screen and I saw these guys they are just here, all of them, and I would say like, am I not really moving fast? <laughs> 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 Somehow, I, I was I, I knew I was moving fast. Somehow, in the last after the six hundred, I knew I was moving fast, but after the six uh, uh, six hundred, I felt like, am I not? that fast because I saw these guys they're just right behind me and then I said let me try to hold on a bit so that I can have at least some good strength in the last hundred meters. I remember was it like 113 on the clock or something like it was so <laughs> fast, <laughs> it was so yeah. fast. <laughs> the fact that anyone was there. What did you do after the race? You don't have to worry about a relay or anything like some other athletes. Did you cool down? Yeah. Oh, like, <laughs> we're, we're a couple more. Yeah. Diamond leagues, but did you? Yeah, what happened after you stepped off the track? You did media, drug testing, and then sell immediately celebrate, or what, what happened? Well, uh, you know, after the sometimes you know when your event comes very late, you, you know you have to go through media, and uh, of course, uh, being the final, definitely one everyone wants to get your story, and uh, that also take uh, quite amount of time, and uh, of course, if you also. Uh, going for uh, the, the the test, that also you know after warming up, after the competition, it's sometimes amazing how much how you become dehydrated, mm -hmm. and uh, you can take like you know liters of water and you don't feel like <laughs> <laughs> nothing's coming, <laughs> nothing is coming. <laughs> so sometimes you have to wait four hours, even yeah. two three hours, and you can imagine by that time it's very late. So of course. Uh, you're tired and you know everybody is still uh are preparing for their competitions and you know uh you just went to bed 
you you just you know feel good and you go to the bed of course i was received by my team a few guys <laughs> when i was coming in so uh but it was great it was great because it's a great feeling but you know for us at least you know um i always say yes uh it's part of our life whenever we do something special we just feel like, okay yes i have another is something else is waiting for me so i have to keep focusing who do you yeah. think has watched that race more near you cuz i've watched it a lot of times do you ever go back and rewatch it i don't know how many times you've watched <laughs> i'm pretty pretty regularly yeah but uh yes most of the time whenever i'm with friends they yeah, like yeah. even in the house you know they like oh can we watch your race <laughs> and they always like to ask how did you felt how did you feel when you're running and how was the race you know did you knew that you were going to break the uh, the record before you started you know what was what were you thinking you know all those sort of question and yeah mostly i watch whenever i'm with my friends but uh, personally i don't know if i've watched many t- <laughs> as many times as you <laughs> your friends are nicer than my friends eh? my friends would never <laughs> celebrate me like that. yeah but every time also a uh, lot of people say that they keep on watching because it was a special piece of ours is that a challenge as a elite athlete you know you have this moment where it's like the greatest moment of your life and you know the feelings and the high and everything are just like another level that for the rest of your life and the rest of your professional career you're chasing that feeling again was that a challenge for you in 2013 i mean in it you know you didn't run in, in moscow and then from there just like the, the injuries came later in your career was that a, you know difficult for you well um yeah you know as an athlete you have to prepare uh, mentally and uh, physically and uh there are so many challenges and i can say yes one of the athletes who have also done very well i have also gone through challenges especially with injury from now on then you know in 2000 and uh, in 2007 i had some problem with injury coming to 2008 and at some point i was like am i not really lucky but uh, i was uh, focused you know and i believe that uh, i was it was not just my luck but let me wait and do the best because i believe i was doing the best but, uh, sometimes things happen you know uh, yeah i waited and you know the years comes you know good years sometimes bad years and uh, that's how we take it you know we have to take everything positively because yes you can't be in control of everything you know uh, in training anything can happen in time just like even in competition even though you sometimes great form the nothing is guaranteed something can happen during the competition you don't make it then when finish the race so it is always uh, you do your best and you pray for good luck with some injuries then how validating does it feel to come back in 2015 and reestablish yourself on the very top Yeah, it is uh, really uh, difficult, you know. Uh, uh, remember after a key old surgery in 20 uh, in 2013 after the uh, the Olympics. Uh it was a tough moment because I know my roots as I used to train back in Italy and I perfectly, you know, it was just in my head even without the watch. I know how I can move fast and I know when I'm starting my season uh, season the position that i was and even when i was feeling good i know when my form is almost at the top but uh, at some point i can do some session and then i feel like my leg doesn't want to go anymore and i had to stop there sometimes i can go for a uh, number 8 km and when i reach 3 or 4 km i have to stop and I have to walk another 4 km. So <laughs> I call my mom. I'm like, "Can you come pick me up?" <laughs> <laughs> But uh, I enjoy just walking, you know. Uh, and it was uh, it was tough, but uh, I managed it and I was uh, happy that uh, after that injury I was able to win a world title in the Olympics. Okay, so going to that Olympic race. Kip Keter, I believe, right? Took t- took out the race for you. Was that spoken about? you know like that he kind of helped share the lead in 2016 as opposed to in 2012 where you just took it from the first step uh 
Now, um, you know, uh, in after uh, 2015, as I told you, I was just after coming from that keel surgery on my knee, I wasn't that great. At some point, I couldn't really do my training as I used to do before. And uh, I was kind of somehow surviving, you know. And um, uh, in some of the session, even on the track, you know, I can feel something like it's locking and it was really sharp and painful, so I had to stop. And I, I've been praying in most of the races that this shouldn't happen. Because if it can happen, then that means I will not finish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I did some good training. You know, in 2016, I was feeling like, yes, I'm coming back. I'm feeling like I'm getting the creeps. Uh, and I told uh, Cape Keta, uh, that, uh, yes, it's going to be another fast race. <laughs> but you couldn't believe. Because, uh, you know, when it's come to Olympic, uh, you know, you have to really focus. And you have to give everything. Uh, it's a different event. It's uh, like World Championships, Olympics. It's a different event. It's not like any other event, like Diamond League, where you can run this week, if you make a mistake, you can maybe mm -hmm. get another race another week, and you can correct that. But when it comes to, if you make a mistake, you have to wait for another four days. So I really prepared myself toward the end. And I felt like, yes, my body is responding. And I told him, I'm going to do uh, another uh, fast race and I'm running from the front but you couldn't believe because uh, he was the national champion mm -hmm. uh, during the Kenyan trial. He said, no, if I beat you in the Kenyan trial, why not here in the, in the final? Oh. He was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that was not planned. It was not planned. It, it looks like such beautifully executed team tactics the way it played out because Coming past 400 meters, it almost seemed like he slowed down on the turn for you to take over. And he, like, I don't know if you're a basketball fan, but he, like, set a pick for you. <laughs> and then he responded, like, without knowing that and hearing that from you, I would have thought that that was drawn up on a, a chalkboard somewhere the way it played out. But that's so interesting. Yeah, it was not planned because, uh, you know, uh, he was also uh, in good form. You know, he was a 142 runner that year. And, uh, you know, I believe that uh, if he could have just stick to the plan that I told him I'm going to run from the front. <laughs> I told you I was going to... Maybe he could have even picked something. He could have picked even a, 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 a silver or a bronze. Yeah. Because he, he, he was looking great that season. But uh, when he ran that uh, 200, it was crazy. And then I saw that and then I slowed down. The 400 was 49. I think it was even faster than mine. Uh, almost faster than my uh, uh, world record in London, faster the first lap, and I knew yes, this one now, it's not it's not gonna be easy for him. <laughs> <laughs> it's not gonna be easy for him, and uh, I think he wasted that chance that day. He really wasted it, and I I felt really bad that he couldn't just listen because he was in good form and he could have done something for his career uh, in Olympic. So he messed it up, but. I had to apply second uh, plan B just to slow down and come with my pace. And then you know, in the last 300, I always make sure that I'm strong. People and forget about 20. I feel like 2012 is always such a focus, but it sounds like especially the path that you had up to 2016 and then the race itself that it played out. Like, how do you think about the fact that like 2016 versus 2012, when you reflect on it, is it, you know, being a two-time gold medalist, like now you're in very thin company. So how do, how do you compare the two when you think back in your career? Well, uh, yes, you know, London was special. You know, it was special uh, on itself because breaking the world record in an Olympic final is something special. And uh, of course, uh, defending your title again in Olympic, it's something, I don't know, it puts you on a different map. No record can be broken any time. But you know, once you win an Olympic title, you become an Olympian almost forever, right. for the rest of your life. And uh, uh, it was special for me because my father also was an Olympian. Yeah. And, uh, silver. Yeah, silver. <laughs> 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 yes, uh, those years, 1960, and in the 4 by 400 meters. So uh, it was uh, really special. And uh, I really worked hard for that and with my coach. 
and uh, I'm glad that it, everything worked so uh, the way we planned and uh, you know uh, even my coach was very glad seeing me with, uh, winning for the second time say Rudisha what have you what have you not done <laughs> <laughs> I think you have done almost everything and you have repeated it if it is the world record you have done more than once if it is the world championship more than once if it is olympic more than once I think he said anything else you'll be doing is just repeating <laughs> it's, it's just up to you to see how long or how far you are going to take this athletics the last time we saw you race was in 2017 and after that yes there were there were injuries but for you i guess like did you ever struggle with that motivation to it seemed like you were very determined even with the injuries that you wanted to make a big comeback and and get back to 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 the top of the sport but for i guess like the last couple of years how hard has that been i mean you're you're only 34 so i don't think like we, you can still make a comeback <laughs> <laughs> yes uh we got the media 800 on on tuesday yeah, yeah. you want to race i'll be in that Unfortunately, I cannot start and <laughs> <laughs> the official Please, starter. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> give me a wink right before you fire the gun, so I know I get a little jump on the field. <laughs> so uh, yeah, you know, I, my retirement wasn't really planned. Especially, you know, um, most of the athletes I can say, most of the athletes actually they never really make uh, or plan their retirement. But most of the athletes sometimes get challenges with injuries. That's how we get out. Most people don't know that uh, uh, Budapest was the city that I did my last. Oh, 2017. Then when I went back uh, to Kenya, uh, you know, for the trials, yeah, I wasn't feeling so uh, so great. And during the training, I also had. I pulled my muscles and I tore some of the, you know, fiber. So um, uh, it, it it never went so well, uh, you know, because uh, uh, since I had the problem with my ankle, it went to the knee, and now it was just like it, it was going zigzag. It was going to this one, to the knee, and then now it's going, and you can see the balance maybe. One leg is trying somehow to compensate. I feel like, as much as I'm training, sometimes when I feel the sharp pain, maybe this one is trying to compensate. Because at some point I don't just stop instantly. I try to slow down. Maybe it will stop and then try to pick without knowing the effect. Sometimes our body is amazing the way it operates. This one is weak. The other one try to be even more stronger. And uh, that's why my injury was just moving forward. I felt like it's not good. Now you're back in Budapest with World Athletics as an ambassador. What's that experience been like? I, I know we're only day two into the World Championships, but you know you've always been an ambassador for the sport in a less official capacity. But now you have a more official role as being an ambassador here. So how has just that whole experience and that program been? Uh, it's uh, really great, you know. Uh, you know, I, I I love sports. I love athletics. It's uh, one of the career that I've, I can say I've been in athletics uh, for almost uh, half of my life. You know, uh, I started running when I was young, when I was still in primary school. Although I have been in athletics, and uh, to be a, it was an ambassador for uh, World Athletic uh, here in Budapest. It's a great honor because uh, I feel like I'm home. I'm meeting even some of my friends that we used to compete together. Some of them now are uh, official. Uh, they, are, they come in as an official. Uh, very few of them are still running out <laughs> there. So, <laughs> so uh, it's really good to see that they are taking different roles and still uh, maintaining and staying in sports who are some of your favorite younger current athletes right now well um you know we have uh, you know beautiful uh, uh, you know young athletes who are you know uh, taking over the stage 
uh, every every time uh, you know uh, there is full of surprises like even yesterday you know it was amazing seeing uh, this uh, his name is Leslie Leslie Tobogo uh, yes Leslie Tobogo you know uh, he, he was just coming from junior the other day and uh, he is doing very well uh, we also have Saf- his, his, his name is Savil from yeah, Jamaica mm-hmm. yeah yeah this guy is impressive you know <laughs> running a personal base in the first round yeah you know and not just <laughs> a personal base <laughs> the first yeah. time and uh, this is uh, the future of sports and we we would like to see you know uh, young guys taking over like that because we were so used to saying bold you know yeah. uh, you know the, the, the Jamaican you know uh, after that we had uh, you know Tyson Gay those group you know uh, okay the South of Powell and the rest but now you see the young also they are coming and they are doing impressively very well and uh, it, it 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 is uh, it is it is good to see also africa uh, for the first time doing uh, very well in 100 meters you know uh, kenya we never had a sprinter in that 100 and 200 uh, running in the, this kind of an event uh, but to see uh, omanyala uh, being one of the favorite it is really good and uh, Uh, these are the kind of uh, you know athletes we admire and uh, we wish them well because they are the future of uh, athletics uh, if you you talked about the world record and how it's going to be broken someday that's how just how records you know they all have a shelf life at some point someone's going to break it it's going to look so different it's not going to come in an olympic final i think now if someone broke your world record there's maybe lights There's nice really advanced technology with the spikes, the great track surfaces. How do you feel about all the advancements <laughs> that we've made in technology? When, yeah, when we're seeing our old friends at these track meets, are you guys sitting around being like if we had these spikes, if yeah. we had these pacing lights, <laughs> it would have been game over. Yes, uh you know, it is always very interesting, you know, uh the way the technology keep on evolving, you know. And uh I can say the spike that we used is not the same one that our father used yeah. in the 1960s and uh, at our time we felt like wow this is the best ever and uh, the technology keep on improving you know the track or you know, say the lights like now if you have the lights you know you you you, you can even just program your own splits and you just have to follow the time and uh, this is really very special to see and uh, i think this will also uh, assist many athletes you know because sometimes you have best make out us and does do a good job <laughs> but with the lights <laughs> you're perfectly <laughs> because it's so electronic how can you not do a good job you don't even have to do anything anymore <laughs> sometimes others goes too fast or yeah. others goes too slow but with the lights you see it is so computerized you can just monitor it yeah so this is a this is a technology and uh, there's nothing uh, special to see the world record being even me i would love to see somebody who can do better than me. you know uh so this is always en- encouraging i remember when i was in high school wilson came to came purposely you know to treat me and see where i was going uh, you know Uh, he was also you know coached by uh, my coach and uh, it it was something very special i felt so good that this one can come all the way <laughs> to just come and visit me in school i didn't uh, it was a surprise because i didn't even know he was coming i was just relaxing there on the weekend it was on a saturday and boom a visitor i was not expecting a visitor just to see it was also it was really very special and i felt like yeah is really encouraging and uh, I knew that yes I'm special <laughs> <laughs> so just to confirm you're what you're saying is with today's spikes and pacing lights and everything you would have run under 14 <laughs> <laughs> I won't put you on the spot you don't have to say it I'll say it um, so you just on Twitter the other day speaking of Wilson uh, you just pointed out it's been 13 years since you first broke the world record in Berlin can you tell us a little bit about that race you know I, again like we're all thinking about London but that wasn't the first time you had broken the world record so the first time that you did it and where are those spikes are those just sitting at home yeah um yeah 2013 uh, to 
it was a was a was was a special year. One uh, we planned with my coach, we were just going to run past races. We didn't have a major championships that year, so we were planning just to go fast. And uh, one of the plan was to attempt the world record. But uh, when I came to Berlin, yes, uh, it was uh, it was an afternoon race. Then about around four or five in the afternoon, and uh, yes, the day before I didn't want even to talk to the press because I was really focusing. Every time I was seated there in my room, I was drawing a sketch of a track and trying to put the splits everywhere. How am I supposed to do the first 400, 200? If I can see the clock is slow after the closing the 400. But what I was quite sure is I told my pacemaker I want to go in uh, 48, the first lap. <laughs> so I want to see that clock, 48. <laughs> <laughs> then the rest, <laughs> let me try my best. <laughs> so I didn't want to talk about my plan. And because it's something I didn't know that it is, was going, uh, it was possible. I didn't want also to give uh, the audience hopes or something to go out to the media. And maybe if I didn't do, maybe I, I, I would feel like, wow, I told I'm going to a record and maybe I didn't make it even, or I didn't even get 143 because I didn't know after going 48. <laughs> Who knows what happened? What will happen in the last <laughs> 200 meters? <laughs> so, I've never gone that fast. So <laughs> I was expecting for anything, but uh, it was a special race. You know, uh, I, it went the way we planned. And I told my person, after 400, I know 48 will also be tough for you. Just try to move aside so that I don't have to come around. I have just to maintain the inside lane, shorter distance. So after 400, you move to the side, started running from the outside line almost squared so that I can not do That's how I, I was flowing nicely. Yes, last 100 was tough. <laughs> it was tough. Yes, it was tough. But I uh, keep on pushing uh, through the line. It was T109. It was. Uh, I was really surprised. Uh, I tried uh, in Houston. I went to a small meet where I said, I don't want any distraction. That's a nice I, track. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I Love don't want atmosphere. any distraction. Yeah. <laughs> there are no, uh, you know, uh, some pro, uh, no, uh, pro uh, athletes who are in the level of running 140 to 143, like um, Kaki, uh, Abu Bakr. Because he was uh, very aggressive in the first 200 and uh, to the first 200. Sometimes he was also fighting to go to the front. I said, I just want to have a race whereby I just run a race where I, I can calculate my split very well without getting distraction from maybe somebody going in front, running too fast. Or so Houston uh, was a perfect place to do that. But Berlin was uh, really special. I didn't even want to go to the. So, uh, I didn't go for press conference. I missed it. <laughs> <laughs> Slept in. Which was, which was <laughs> I, I, I felt bad about it. But it's because of uh, the focus that I had. Yeah. I didn't want to lose that, and I didn't want to promise something. I don't know if I will deliver. So I just wanted to all be, you know, like free. Just run my race. I mean, if I was a meet director, it's like, would I rather David show up to the press conference before or break a world record? I'll take the world record every single day. That's a better trade. Definitely. <laughs> you, you were also very happy. You know? <laughs> <laughs> happy and everything works so well. You made him look great. Yeah. Yes. Is 2011, 12, 13, like the craziest time in your life when you go back to, to Kenya? I was, I visited E10 uh, two months ago and I was there and it's, you know, the, you just see sometimes, and and in Captagat, just like the athletes walking around, but someone like Kipchoge, he can't go to the store by himself. Like so many people would stop him and and take pictures. For you, was that it? Was life like that for you as well in 2011, 12, 13? Yes, uh, you know, uh, it. You know, when you know Kenyans, they are really good fans of uh, athletics, and they follow athletics. Of course, and Premier League. 
فوتبول ارسنال سو they really follow athletic closely and especially they know the region uh, that is Rift Valley where most athletes train and uh, yeah surely whenever they see you of course some of them stop they have for selfies you know they you know they just feel good to associate with you and uh, of course you better not be in a hurry otherwise you <laughs> will get late to where you are going so sometimes you just of course we cannot also just stay in the house you have to go out these are people support us in one or the other uh, uh, whenever even we uh, we are out there we feel them and whenever there is any competition around they are the one who feel this trust cheer and celebrate us so we create also sometime moment like that where but you even go to the market you know just shop around do something and everybody feel happy you know although of course it's not an organized event so you meet one by one most of the time i, I think something that's interesting you're talking about the impact that meeting wilson had on you and your ability to go around town and obviously shake hands take pictures with everyone but also hearing you speak now it's obvious that like you're not just a really talented athlete you actually have a really high running IQ as well and you've been coached by one of the greatest coaches of all time is that a path that you would ever be interested in exploring as a career to go coach some athletes yourself well um you know um coaching is uh, very interesting and uh, it's a kind of a field that uh, uh it's always very hard to understand because uh, you know you can't just have a program for example and uh, try to you know try, try try to you know to make it like every athlete can follow that kind of a program and succeed uh, with my coach uh, it was kind of very interesting you know working with him right from the beginning because uh, he was tough and most of the time he made me train with some longer distance athletes who are running 5000 uh, 10000 and cross country i didn't uh, in my time i didn't have so many sprinters or middle distance although we had choge who was also very strong running all the way to 10000 so coaching is very interesting and uh, is a field you need to really explore for quite a, a long time but now because i'm also working with athletic kenya uh, you know with the new rules is that uh, you have to choose where, whether you want to be an official or you want to be a coach so you have to choose one but uh, because uh, official came first now i find myself in uh, part of the officials God. <laughs> i was going to say i only i need a coach for two days i have the media 800 coming up <laughs> to tell me your workout and see what he thinks he can run. I'm too embarrassed to share my workouts these days in prep, but um no I mean it, it sounds like even in addition to being an official, you know, politics ambassadorship, like what do you see your roles developing in the next 10, 15, 20 years? I mean, look at Seb Co, former 800 meter world record, now changing the sport uh as president and everything is that the path that you do see yourself going down well yeah you know uh, running is different with politics <laughs> <laughs> you know leadership is more like also come with politics and uh, uh yeah you can, you can you can you can even you know uh attest that you know sepco was running in the 1980s and you can see that journey all along up to now it took a, a very very long time and uh, it's because he had a lot of passion in athletics and his line of work always has kept although you I, I he also uh, vie for an mp mm-hmm. yes some time back and then he left and came back to athletics so i would love to work in athletics because um this is the field that i understand so many things so far and uh, it's make it even more easier so something like i can start from the scratches so um 
Yes, I also wanted to vie for a uh, political seat back at home, but I thought, no, that is not a good idea. You know, <laughs> it is a different field, and uh, it, it is full of uh, up and downs in terms of, uh, you know, uh, campaigns and so forth. And I felt like, no, I don't think I'm up to the tax. So I would love to work in athletics because this is where I feel like... Uh, yeah, I have a lot of uh, also uh, a lot of things to give back. Are we hiring by chance? Would you like to come work for Sidious Mag? <laughs> we have extra seats on these interviews. Well, I, was, well, I, was, I was thinking the entire time, like because of the eyes you have, like you'd be an amazing analyst, like for to do TV broadcasts or or, or things like that. So. Kyle used to run professionally and was a 1500 meter runner. So when he watches a 1500 meter race, he can tell, you know, with maybe a lap to go, that guy is going to win or that guy's going to medal or that guy looks good. When you watch an 800 meter race with 100 meters to go or 200 meters to go, do you know what's going to happen? Like, do you, can you tell that's that's the guy who's going to win? Yes, uh, sometimes uh, it is. Uh, you know, when the race started. When the race starts, it is uh, easier sometimes to know an athlete, and mostly we can see because of we we are the background. You can see even the behaviors, you know, the way they are running. You see somebody strong is just trying to stay behind. You can see his movement, the strides, and everything. And uh, sometimes I can say we can we can spot somebody who's probably gonna win. But uh, it sometimes it's about 70% that they're going to win. So I can say, most of the time I can support somebody and say, during the race, this person is going to win. 70% they're winning. I like that. That's some good accuracy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I would expect, <laughs> I would hope nothing less. Uh, uh, when you were racing, I was like 100% of the time. It's I can knew who was going to win. Yeah, all the time. <laughs> David's going to win this race. David's going to win this race. Yeah. Uh, so David, I guess with the... Seven, a week left of the world championships. What events are you looking forward to the most? Yeah, uh, today uh, 100 meters is yeah. going to be very interesting. Of course, uh, 800 meters both. Uh, it's also going to be another interesting uh, competition. To Kenyan watch. gold medal sweep, Mary Mora, and you know Emmanuel Career or somebody. Is that what you think? Uh, as we said, 800 both is just 50-50. Okay. 50-50. <laughs> All these guys are almost at the, s at the, at the same level. And uh, it can go anywhere. And uh, it depends how it is going to start. Who is the most, the toughest person for you to, to race and beat? You were that guy for everybody. But for you, was there anybody early in your career or in those last couple of years that you were like, that was, I was always chasing him. And then finally you started beating everybody. The clock? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, we started, uh, you know, uh, when I started uh, my career, actually, you know, as I said, I had also up and down with the injuries. But there's some years whereby I really struggled, you know, running behind uh, Abu Bakr Kaki. Mm -hmm. And it was really tough. It was, it was really tough. And we started together in the World Junior. You know, I beat him and he came fourth in 2006 in Beijing. So it's a kind of a person we came a long way together. And uh, any time I was not at my best, he's always there. And he was really tough. He was really tough guy. Yeah. Any part of you ever think about trying like a 1500 at some point? See what you can do? Obviously you had some success in the 400 as two up races leading into 800s, but any temptation to ever jump in a 15? Uh, not really. <laughs> not really. <laughs> Smart. I wouldn't have either. <laughs> <laughs> not really. <laughs> yes. Uh, I was more like uh, a 400 meter, 800. And uh, a 400, I can run in time comfortably. Even if I don't win. But I feel like, yes, it is a kind of a race that I can still feel running and I'm comfortable. But uh, I tried once a thousand meter and I felt like I was disoriented you know? <laughs> I didn't know 
Where is even 800 starting? And I don't know where t- on what point I was in that competition. I completely got confused in my mind. <laughs> Forget about my race. I was just following the guys now. You lined up on the wrong side. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So uh, 15 meters will be long. A marathon for you. It will be a long, it will be a long, a long one. And uh, the reason why I say that is... Um, I was special in even some of my training with my coach and if you see the way I used to train with other 800 meters runner I was kind of a different I was a kind of uh, an athlete who does who does very short sh- type of training but with good quality some does long distance you know long uh, session but in some of my for example track training I can do only about 2000 to 28 or maximum of 3000 mm. and that is including maybe 600 1600 a few to 400 but with a good uh, time uh, really rest in between but mostly at my best time i used to do uh, 21 uh, 2100 meters in on the track but very good quality you've been really generous with your time i know you have to go soon but i would be remiss not to ask best workout that you'd ever done that or you know or at least a favorite workout that said you know I'm ready to go run fast well um my favorite uh workout is on the track and is the 300 meters yeah. i can do when i am at my best i can do 300 meters for uh, in a time of around 37 36 Uh, 35 and Looks then like finish 34. 35 or <laughs> because it's a take off I can even do 34 how many how many minutes rest would you do that with with that one uh, just prior the uh, competition I tried to make it like 60 second in between <laughs> <laughs> or What? 60 60 to 90 because I just finish I jog and then I start again Oh my god. So and it's, it's not it's not that long. That is six uh, three, it's just like <laughs> the, the former mile it's just like 1200. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. 12 to 12 1200. What thousand 200 meters. But very tough one because it's just like jogging and then stretch. Oh my god. And uh, that is one of my best session, sessions and after that I can tell you if I can do that and I feel good <laughs> after. And I can tell you, yeah. That's where that confidence I'm comes so from. I'm so glad I asked that oh question. Oh my God, I'm confident. All right, <laughs> well, that was <laughs> the perfect note to, to end this interview. David, this has truly been an honor to, to listen to you, just kind of look back at some of the best moments and then also just your optimism for the sport and its future. So thank you so much for, for taking the time for this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Awesome. And we'll be right back with an interview with, uh, I believe we're going to have world championship bronze medalist Tori Franklin coming up soon. E6. Sound mind, sound body. 365 days. One year until history is made. A lifetime of preparation that will lead us to the ultimate test. 365 days until we show the world what a sound mind and a sound body can do. See you in Paris. Stability never felt better. The first five miles, you're just getting warmed up. From downtown to uptown, you'll take the scenic route. Tide legs? Yours feel fresh. From first steps to final strides. Steep hills, super steep hills, long runs, even longer runs. Whatever comes, you can run through it. With stability, cushioning, and more comfort than ever in every step. Because nothing feels better than the adaptive stability and premium comfort of the Gel Keano 30 shoe.
E6. Sound mind, sound body. 365 days. One year until history is made. A lifetime of preparation that will lead us to the ultimate test. 365 days until we show the world what a sound mind